Hello and welcome to our Tuesday discussion with Dr. Christian Schulz. Um, it's exciting to have Dr. Christian Schulz here and uh, our Tuesday discussions are run and convened jointly by my colleague Dr. Gesa Lüdecke and myself, a director of graduate programs. Um, it's wonderful to have Christian Schulz here. I actually ran into him a few times in the eco farm on which our Landhaus fellows, the Carson fellows, live outside of Munich. And uh, we realized that what he's working on is really exciting for us. Um, Christian was originally, and still is actually, but he trained as a doctor, as a medical doctor, uh, more specifically as an anesthetist. Is that how you call it? Anesthetist? It's a tongue breaker, tongue twister. Um, and he, he practiced as an anesthetist for many, many years, like 15 years. Uh, he moved up on the ladder, uh, not only as a scientist, uh, doing his PhD and doing his second PhD, the habilitation, which makes you a professor in Germany, but also in the hospital to become like, like number two in line. So he was on the second highest staircase or ladder. Um, and then um, he decided that he would leave the city of Munich, where he was um, yeah, uh, doing the uh, practicing in the hospital Rechts der Isar, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so he, for a number of reasons, he didn't want to be in the city, and he, but he wanted to be close to Munich. And he ended up moving to the eco farm, to the Hermannsdorfer Landwerkstätten, where our Landhaus fellows, many of whom are here today, um, are actually have their residence. And uh, well, uh, he decided to do something that he told me was 10,000 times more exciting than medicine, than becoming the head of a clinic, which would have been his next step. And we really want to hear what, what is 10,000 times more exciting. It's about the German alliance of, for health and climate, or climate and health. Climate change and health. Climate change and health. K-L-U-G, which means clever. Klug in German means clever in English. And so we are looking forward to a clever talk. I, uh, I will tell you one thing. Uh, Christian has to leave early, and so do our Landhaus fellows. Um, he actually has a band practice. He's playing the tuba. And our Landhaus fellows have to catch the last train uh, together with him. So uh, please join me in welcoming uh, Dr. Christian Schulz. Thank you very much. It's a nice introduction. Um, oh. can, can, can you see him? It's <laughs> must Ich muss ein bisschen nach rechts, sonst sitze ich voll im, im Beamer drin, dann sehe ich nichts. Ja. Um, so actually I moved to Hermannsdorf 15 years ago, so I practiced uh, all the time I practiced in the hospital. I already lived, uh, I already lived there. Um, then at the end of my career, I started to question how our money is invested, uh, how medical pension funds money is invested and whether they divest or not. Uh, and finally, they didn't want to answer. And so we started a scientific study to ask all the pension funds of, medi of physicians in Germany uh, to ask them uh, how it is invested. And the response rate to our question was zero. Zero percent, and then uh, we published the letters we received where they argued why they didn't respond to our request. And finally, um, when we published this, I knew the uh, German Alliance Climate Change and Health, and I started to work in the hospital um, in order to, to reduce the carbon footprint in the hospital, because our um, healthcare sector emits about 5% of, of, of the overall emissions worldwide. And we started with a narrative of sustainability and also um, yeah, carbon reduction or carbon neutrality. But later, in course of starting with Klug, uh, we started to change our narratives. And now we talk about planetary health because planetary health describes in a transdisciplinary way how ecosystems and how the decline of ecosystems is related to health, not only in Germany, in the whole world. Um, 
And that's why it's a question of resilience, um, adaption to the changes we are confronted with, and also mitigation, how, what to do to um, reduce the change, to reduce climate change and the impact. So to understand what's happening, it's the, I think it's the most important thing to, to open the space of time we are talking about. And here you can see the last 200 years. And we see how the population increased to, from 1 to 8 uh, billion people, how poverty decreased, and how life expectancy doubled in the last 100 years. And this is, of course, related to other socio-economic trends. Uh, for example, the GDP is uh, um, there in the middle. It uh, has to increase, and of course it has, it has to increase all the time, um, because if not, we, we, have, we are angry to get um, to lose of, of um, prosperity, for example. But <clears throat> this is a problem. Um, in the Earth system trends, we have parameters who describe the decline of the ecosystems. And me, for example, I'm an anesthesiologist. Even a human being, carbon dioxide doubles, he is almost dead. And we are looking for a tube and an intensive care bed. And here you can see many vital parameters of our planet who are um, developing in a, in a similar in a similar manner. And the problem is, is it's nonlinear, so we have an increase of speed. Yeah. So, yeah. Then, because we are in Bavaria, it's important to open the time space even more, and now it's uh, to, uh, to uh, 22,000 years. And in Hermannsdorf, for example, we had, in the place to see, we had about several hundred meters of ice above us, and then it took 6,000 years to smell, uh, where we went out of the caves, um, where we entered in a period of 10,000 years of climate stability, we started to create plants and livestock. Um, life expectancy decreased from almost a normal life expectancy to below 30 years because we had we also all the zoonosis. Um, that is, we received the bacteria and the virus from, from the animals. And the other thing is that we couldn't mm, escape because we had to protect what we had there. And after about 10,000 years of stability, we started to extract coal, oil and gas. Um, we put a lot of money and we had a mixture at the end um, that leads to the increase of temperature finally. So we have a lot of prosperity, what we uh, gained the last 200 years, but also a lot of impact, a lot of doubt towards the planet. And now we are more or less at 1.2 degree and we are heading straight forward to 3 degree or more. And the way we influence the ecosystems is it's the first time it's, that it's in a geological dimension. And they, that's why we call it Anthropocene. And at the same time, we are in the sixth mass extinction in the history of the planet. And of course, we are in the midst of these chains of, 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 of uh, nutrition. In other terms, in the terms of planetary boundaries, we have transgressed six of, say, identified nine um, boundaries. The last ones were, for example, fresh water use. We have a lot of water, was, but now it's in the air, but it's no more in the, in the ground. So we have droughts, um, loss of um, livestock, food, um, and malnutrition uh, as a consequence. And the other thing is that we have a increasing quantity of novel ent entities where we don't know exactly how they interact with each other, but also with, for example, in, in, in the medical sense, with, with other hormones or mm, Kreisläufe, Regelkreisläufe. Circulation. Yeah, yeah circulation. Um, circuits. Herm her yeah, circuits, circuits. And, and, and feedback loops mm -hmm. in, uh, which are driven mm -hmm. by, by, by hormones, for example. So there are several boundaries we have transgressed in a, in a way um, that is putting us in danger. And this is, what's, this is what is finally described here. Uh, we have a global warming 
And it's not only that we have direct impact from extreme weather events or heat waves. It also increases economic inequality. We have uh, sea level rise, of course. We have vector-borne diseases, as the pandemic, for example. Together, this is increases mortality and morbidity in all fields of medicine. Um, and of course, we see shortage of fuel, uh, fuel uh, shortage of food, shortage of water. In Germany, for shortage of um, food and water is not so important because we have enough money to buy food and water anywhere else. Uh, but if it's fuel, what is short, we, we are getting quite nervous. And especially in the healthcare sector, where on the expense side now is increasing terribly, so we, are, uh, we need a lot of money to stabilize now the healthcare sector. Um, this is a slide describing how we greenhouse gas emissions lead to alterations of the ecosystems with finally impacts on all levels of um, health in every discipline of medicine. And what happened this year is, and this was our, our initiative um, based on the latest report of the Lancet Countdown on Health and Climate Change that describes very clearly that health is at the mercy of fossil, fossil fuels. Mm. We, we, we saw the report and, and uh, we thought, okay, this is much harder and much clearer than the reports before. And we decided to ask our Ministry of Health of, of, of Germany um, to, to join together with us. And um, Johann Rockström, who is uh, director of the Potsdam Institute of Climate Impact Research, uh, the Bundespressekonferenz, and of course, on the on the right side, you can see the president of the Bundesärztekammer, the Federal Assembly of, of Physicians. And first, we asked him. He said, "Yes, I I will join your your initiative." And then we asked um, Karl Lauterbach, and we said, "Johann Rockström will come." And said, "If you, if Johann Rockström will come, then I come. I also will join." And um, then we told Johann Rockström that Lauterbach will join, and then he said, "Okay, well, if Lauterbach joins, I, I will, I will join also." <laughs> this is what, how it works, finally. And yeah, this was a great success for us to to have combined one of the world leading researchers on climate impact and planetary boundaries together with the Ministry of. Uh, of health because this combines these two dimensions um, and this is I think quite important for for the for the next steps so what we need is health in all policies because we are not able to we will we won't be able to mitigate sufficiently if we don't um, respect health aspects in every ministry and it means that we need a planetary health diet, for example. That means a, a, a type of nutrition that mean, that is enough for 8 billion or 10 billion people, uh, but which avoids on the same time mal mal malnutrition. Uh, because now in the rich countries we are too fat, uh, and, and in the low-income countries we, have, we don't have enough. Uh, so it's, it's not good for, for no, uh, no one of both. Uh, we need um, a change in how we move from one location to another. Uh, so we have uh, we, we need physical active transport. Uh, that includes that we have to pull out, push out the, the cars from the cities because we have about 400,000 people who die prematurely due to pollution. Um, we need we have to look for for solutions how to protect ourselves against extreme weather events. We had this year um, 5,000 premature deaths due to heat. Uh, in, in Europe, we had more or less 100,000 premature deaths due to heat because we are not well protected. And finally, of course, because health is at the mercy of fossil fuels, we need a transition, the transition of the ener energy systems. Mm. In the beginning, I told, I spoke about speed, about the problem of speed. We have the geological dimension of speed and so it's an emergency we have uh, about three seconds or or five at the rest of the planet at the rest of the time lifespan of the planet to 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 um, to solve the problem um, 
in the in the time span of the species, the human race. We're now here for 200,000 years, more or less. The big question is what is what is faster, the decline of the ecosystems or our capacity to adapt, our capacity to ev uh, um, to ev evolve. Um, and that's why we are looking, and that is what we do finally in our um, association. We are looking for social tipping elements. So we need elements who serve to change societies sufficiently quickly. Um, and then we have the, the, uh, the, the agility in, in the societies to, to, to rapidly adapt and to rapidly change systems and we think that the healthcare sector has a very strong integrative power towards the societies and that's why we focus on the healthcare sector um, with our narratives about first climate change and health and now planetary health. Thank you. <laughs>